Hello everyone, it's Polar's Lights and Signals. I hope you guys are staying cool right now. It is uh, very hot out up here in Michigan. It's almost 100 degrees and I am starting to go crazy with this heat. Um, hopefully uh, some of you guys aren't suffering as much as I am. I know a lot of places are about to start getting this heat wave too. But um, I recommend uh, everyone, if you can, to drink as much water as possible and stay indoors and uh, don't run your street lights as much uh, your mercury lights because they give off lots of heat um, anyway uh, today I want to go over this uh, signal so uh, this is a 8 inch uh, aluminum Econolite signal this is from uh, the late 90s uh, the signal I got recently from uh, from Cincinnati Ohio off of Facebook marketplace um, I went ahead and uh, got it because I thought it was really interesting um, it kind of like, um, has made signals for a really long time. Um, I think since the 60s, uh, they bought out GE, I believe, um, sometime in uh, the 60s uh, when GE uh, was around. Uh, GE had actually bought out uh, Marble 8. So it kind of jumps a little bit um, around the uh, branding. But um, it kind of like has been making signals since the 60s. And um, has... Uh, Sometime in the 90s, uh, they came out with this signal. Um, I don't know much about this uh, Econolite signal or what type of uh, signal or what model name this signal is. Um, if anyone knows, uh, please tell me down below in the comments. It's always appreciated. But since this is uh, incandescent, um, it kind of got me excited because I find, and um, I'm starting to find, that a lot of these uh, newer incandescent traffic lights are not very easy to find. And if you do find them, um, they probably uh, have already been retrofitted with some type of LED uh, technology. So it's nice to have an authentic incandescent one uh, in my collection. Anyway, other than that, uh, I don't really know uh, much more about the signal. Um, one thing I will say is uh, Econolite seems to get a lot of bad rep, uh, especially uh, for their newer stuff. Um, a lot of their... Uh, polycarbonate signals, or at least I think they're polycarbonate signals, apparently are really low quality. Unfortunately, MDOT, which is up here in Michigan, um, stopped using uh, Eagle Derisigs, which I actually really like, and I have one. Um, and they uh, are using the 12-inch polycarbonate Econolite signals, and a lot of people say they're very bad quality. Um, one thing I notice actually right off the bat with them is that the visor tabs seem to break uh, right when they put them up and then the visors just fall off. They don't last even a day. Um, I just got into the traffic signal apprenticeship so unfortunately I'm probably going to have to start dealing with these signals. And when it comes to their aluminum signals, um, the aluminum is not really an, uh, like a galvanized anodized aluminum. It's just basically a fresh uh, a fresh uh, cast mold and they don't anodize it which anodizing is a process that uh, is used to make metal uh, non-corrosive and last longer you know like aluminum for example. Um, apparently uh, these newer Econolite signals um, have a very bad tendency of corroding quickly and then uh, paint chips uh, form on them. Now, I've never seen any Connolly uh, aluminum signal in service anywhere that has had this issue. I have seen metal Econolly signals, but most of the ones I've seen are pretty new and I've not seen this problem. But even with this one, um, this one doesn't have any paint chips on it, and we will see in a minute here when we get a closer look at it. Um, it seems to be uh, pretty good, but I'm guessing once these weather down a bit and uh, issues start to uh, arise, such as uh, that corroding process. But yeah, I mean, really, you know, since the signal has pretty much been inside its whole life, and I can tell because I believe this is a custom order signal, um, there really isn't anything wrong with it. I don't see any paint chips. You know, maybe I can see something right here. Now, I think that's just a metal imperfection, but I mean, it looks fine, you know, it looks pretty decent, it's very smooth. So I don't actually know um, for sure uh, how cheap or how good this signal is made, but yeah. So I mean, if you guys know more about that, uh, please feel free to share uh, your guys' experience, but, for, uh, but this one seems to be fine. Anyway, before we take a close look at it, 
Um, you can see it's a nice dark uh, green color. Um, this was definitely came in this color. It's really nice. You see it has some really nice cutaway visors. This has a pretty nice uh, trapezoid back shape, as you can see here. And I'll flip it on its back. You can see it says Econolite in really nice big letters. It's really cool. Um, the 12-inch the modules um, are definitely made to have a nice flow when connecting them to an 8-inch module, which hopefully I can get one day. Um, one thing to note, uh, the, the polycarbonate versions of this 8-inch uh, version are actually, uh, I think, a slight bit different in shape. But the polycarbonate versions of the 12-inch versions are actually the same as uh, the same exact mold and shape as the uh, uh, metal ones. So you can zoom into the logo real quick. You can see it has that nice modern Econolite logo. You can actually see some what well, looks to be some uh, screwing tabs there, and those are for putting uh, putting those, uh, I don't know what they call them, but it's those black wind visor things that they start putting on signals. Um, they actually do make those for 8 inch signals. Um, funny enough, before I did this video, uh, I was actually curious about that because I had never seen signals, uh, 8 inch uh, signals with wind visors, but I just recently did some work in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and they have a lot of 8 inch signals with those types of visors, so pretty cool to know that that actually exists. But yeah, so for overall it's a pretty basic, uh, pretty basic in design, you know, it's not really too fancy, but I will say it is definitely a very nice clean look, and it would def definitely look good up in the air. Anyway, let me go ahead and uh, lay it down and we can start to take a closer look at it. Alright, so I got the signal laid down. I am going to uh, just talk about the metal in general. Of course, like I said, even though uh, the metal may or may not be cheap, um, at least for this uh, signal, the metal is pretty well. Um, it's all molded nicely. All the details feel good. Everything's smooth. Even the paintwork on this is very nice. Um, you can see there's actually a lot of detail on this signal. Every little detail is molded well. There's no unfinished pieces of metal anywhere. If we look onto the side here, you actually can see some roughness. Maybe they didn't finish it too well there, but that's actually not that bad. The paint has managed to uh, make it smooth, I guess. You can see those uh, nice little screw, uh, screw in holes for those uh, wind visors that they put on. And here is the back side again. You can see uh, there is some markings in here. I believe that's actually from me. Um, the signal you can actually tell has been banged around a bit. Again, you can see that really nice Econolite logo on the back. It is definitely finished uh, really, really well. So this mold is actually nice, um, despite it possibly being cheap. And yeah, there's no rough edges. And like I said, the paint, the paint's finished really well on it. Um, really nice paint finish. I don't know if it's a powder coated paint or if it's just a cooked on paint, but um, hearing, uh, since I'm hearing that people say the paint chips, that is telling me that it's uh, cooked on paint, which uh, isn't actually very reliable. The powder coating is a lot better. But anyway, you can see uh, there's actually a sticker on here, and this is why I think this is a custom order sticker. So you can see it says type, you got three, uh, three eighths and a 12, and then it says aluminum green with arrow. I believe someone probably ordered this, uh, whoever the person was I bought it from, they probably had a 12 inch uh, module on the bottom for an arrow. Um, and I'm guessing, uh, they I don't know what they would have done with it, but I'm guessing this signal was ordered uh, that way. So uh, pretty interesting. I kind of wish I did have that, but unfortunately I don't. Um, you can actually see it has some other uh, other uh, spec, uh, spec readings on it. You can see it has a cat number, it has some specs, a uh, spec number. It actually has a voltage, which is kind of interesting. So um, it says uh, for watts, a uh, 69 to 150, which um, I don't know if that's entirely true because uh, the lenses are not glass on this. So yeah, and you can see it's from February 1999. So, pretty cool. Um, I've never seen a tag uh, this detailed on a traffic light before. Um, usually when I'm doing street lights, I see these types of tags. So, pretty odd, but um, pretty cool at the same time. So, yeah. 
anyway, if we flip it back over here, uh, you can see the front part of the signal. This one has some nice cutaway visors, and um, they're actually really nice and thick. Um, this one got a little bent, but no worries. And they got these really nice tabs here. Um, at least, I guess, for these uh, metal versions, I'm sure these tabs don't break very easily. And to unscrew it, you got some really nice uh, big screws that hold the tabs in. And what's cool about uh, this signal is this, the hole, um, the holes here for the screws actually continue inside the door here, and then there's screws on the inside that hold the tabs, which we'll see in just a moment. So pretty cool. Um, yeah. And I think, uh, is it painted black? Yeah, they actually have this painted black on the inside. So pretty nice. Um, yeah, it's a uh, pretty cool. So to get inside your signal here, you got these nice little wing tabs, and they're kind of weird to undo. So there's kind of this little hook, so you just gotta turn that out like that. I'll do this one. Kind of has a weird uh, hook-in uh, pressure type system. All right, with those undone, we can now open the door. All right, you can see the inside of the door here and the lens, which I will take the amber lens out, um, and then we can look at the lens. They're all the same. You can see there's a number here. I don't know what that's for. You can see it says Econolite. Again, you can see the uh, numberings and uh, letterings are molded really, really well. Um, you know what? There are some rough spots actually a little bit on the inside. You know what though? They're not too bad. Um, like I said, you know, the, at least the edges and everything feels really nice and smooth. So nothing really too much to worry about. And like I said, uh, the holes continue on the inside, so here is the screws on the inside. You just got these really nice uh, stainless steel tabs here that hold your lens in. Pretty cool. And you got a nice rubber gasket for the lens, keep water out. And then for the door, um, this is just some uh, rubbery foam. And this is to seal the door in from any moisture or water. And yeah. Going down here to our reflector assembly, you can see the 8-inch Econolite has a really, really big piece of pressed aluminum, uh, pressed aluminum reflector. Uh, it just takes up the whole module. So, um, I actually do like this. Um, this is very high quality, uh, surprisingly. Um, you know, maybe these, uh, alumina, uh, aluminum Econolite signals aren't too, too bad, because, like, one thing I'm going to say, and this is definitely, uh, why it's high quality, is it's made by Alzac. Uh, Alzac makes a lot of pressed aluminum reflectors for uh, traffic lights, which uh, this marble light here that I did a video on has an Alzac ref uh, reflector. And my little Pemco Model 70 for all my streetlight viewers that are watching right now also has an Alzac ref reflector, which is really high quality. So yeah, uh, it's kind of nice to know that uh, this has a nice reflector in an Alzac. Um, I guess I didn't know Alzac had been, uh, was still around in the 90s. Um, if anyone knows if they're still around today, please let me know. Um, they, cause they really do make uh, nice stuff. So yeah. You can see the socket here. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, skip this for now when I go to take the reflector out in the yellow to show you guys the control. Um, we'll take a little bit of a closer look at that, but yeah. Really, really cool. And you can see, uh, for my bulbs, I have, uh, just some nice, uh, standard incandescents. They are 69 waters. And one thing to note before we, uh, move on down is, uh, every reflector in here actually says a max of 69 watts, which, um, you know, I don't know if this is for the lens here or if it's, uh, you know, for the reflector. But yeah, the sticker, with the stickering on the back and with uh, this labeling, and in a moment we're going to see with this reflector, um, I guess there really isn't a specific wattage uh, rating for this. <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, we'll go ahead and close that. And of course, when you uh, go to uh, tighten this door back down, you just want to make sure that it hooks in. And then you can screw that down, and it kind of works itself in really, really well. All right, let's go ahead and move on down now to the amber. So here's the amber. Again, the same thing to open it. You got these uh, wing tabs with the little L hook thing. All right. Really, really nice. 
Again, you can see the same thing. You got this really nice Alzac reflector here, and oops, those instructions are falling out. We'll take a look at those in just a moment. I'll try to throw them off to the side there. So yeah, you can see the uh, brains of the signal here. Real quick, uh, let me go ahead and uh, show you guys uh, how to take this out. So one thing you must do to uh, disconnect your wiring is uh, undo these spade terminals that you can see on the terminal block here. It just undid the yellow. So there is a ground wire too, and that's something I almost forgot to mention. And I'll show it to you guys uh, once I take this out. Come on. Uh, these spades are a little sticky sometimes. I'm guessing this is a double crimped connection. Let's see. Oh, jeez. This really won't come out. There we go. Alright. So uh, now that that's out, to get your uh, to get your reflector out, I believe you just gotta press down on it on this top section. It's one of the two where you press down up on the bottom. So you can see there's these little tabs, if I can get it just right, these little tabs sticking out here with springs. And what you want to do is lift up on it so it releases it out of its little hole here. And once you can do that, you can pull it back down and it easily just comes out like this. And if you ever have to clean it or do any uh, maintenance on it or any wire repair, um, that's uh, now out for you. And of course, to get your lens out, all you gotta do really is just undo these tabs. So I'll go ahead and undo these real quick for you guys. And I'll just show you one real quick. All you gotta do is really just unscrew them like this. Once you have them all out, your lens will come out. So let me go ahead and screw uh, these real quick and we can take a look at the lens first. Alright, so I got the lens out here. Let me put this aside for a moment. So here is our lovely lens. Um, this, I think, is a Lexalite lens. Let me, uh, so uh, let me take this off first. So this is the rubber gasket. It's just a standard black gasket and this one's in pretty good shape. Again, this helps to seal the lens from any water or bugs. Uh, let's see, yes, this is a Lexalite lens. So uh, here's, uh, let me just kind of hold it again. So here is the lens. Like I said, this is a polycarbonate lens. Um, it is definitely a uh, really high quality. Um, you can see it uh, has a very nice clear look to it. It has a lot of clarity and it's uh, clean and crisp in mold. And I really, really like um, lenses to be that way. You can see uh, it says top to let you know uh, what part is the top. And you got your eight inch diameter label there. It says uh, XL 3650. I really don't know what that means. So here is actually the real rating pretty much for the signal because of the lenses it has. So for uh, for continuous, you want to use a 69, meaning that if it's on all the time, um, because the bulb can actually heat, heat up quite a bit. Um, I've seen a lot of these polycarbonate and plastic lenses burn if they have the wrong lamps in them. So yeah, you want to just use a 69 watt lamp so it doesn't get that burn in. But um, I don't know if that's entirely accurate. I think these will kind of burn really at any wattage. Right here you can see it says Lexalite. Uh, Lexalite makes a lot of different types of lenses. They actually made, uh, if you hadn't seen my last video that I did on my uh, rainbow traffic light, um, those were Lexalite lenses too. So yeah, they were nice. And for uh, intermittent use, which is not, you know, is not means the lamp isn't on all the time. You can use a higher wattage lamp because it won't have as much of a tendency to burn. Uh, 116 watts max. So it's still on the back of the signal that it could go up to 150. So yeah, um, you definitely don't want to use a 150 watt bulb on these at all. Um, they uh, are going to get very hot. You can use a 169 on a 12 inch and it won't do anything, but yeah. So, uh, you know, if there's any uh, sig actually like people who work on traffic signals in real life, um, and don't know too much about signals or kind of learning them. Um, if anyone actually ever maintenances uh, these signals, make sure you look at the lens. Don't look at what the it says on the signal. The lens is going to tell you what wattage you want because, yeah, unless it's a glass lens, it doesn't matter. Glass can last, so, yeah. Pretty nice. So, yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. Um, the bead detailing is pretty, uh, pretty nice, but it is a pretty standard... Uh, bead pattern uh, for traffic signaling. But I mean, other than that, yeah, I do give this a lot of praise, um, despite it being pretty basic. 
Um, this is a very, very nice lens. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and put that aside. Let's look at our Alzac ref uh, reflector again, just a little bit more closely. Um, here is uh, that lamp. It's got nice incandescent lamps. One thing I probably am going to start doing with uh, any signals that I have that are plastic or have uh, plastic lenses is uh, start using uh, filament LEDs just, just to minimize uh, the amount of heat damage that the lamps can actually cause to um, better uh, preserve uh, my signals. Because um, that is something I definitely do as a collector. I'm sure you guys know um, I try to um, preserve everything as much as I can. Um, even though I am definitely... Uh, definitely interested and definitely on board with completely restoring stuff while restoring I definitely want to preserve as much uh, as much things as possible now the signal is not going to need a lot of restoration obviously but um, keeping it preserved means uh, that putting some filament LEDs in it will probably uh, help uh, minimize any heat damage so yeah but for any uh, metal signals that actually have glass lenses I will definitely stick these in um, just to keep that authenticity but yeah um, for now, I have these. Um, they're not really that bad. The lenses are pretty new, so I'm not too, too worried about it. Here is, again, that uh, nice Alzac ref uh, reflector, and it has that nice square, uh, just, I don't really know what this is, frame on it. It's very, very good, actually, for what it is. You can see the uh, the finish on it, too, and this is something Alzac's really good at doing. It has a really nice finish. Oh, you can see me. Hello. Um, I don't have my shirt on. It's just really, really warm today. Um, yeah, it's really nice, and you can see the socket, just a medium-based socket. Uh, here is the wiring actually coming out of the back of the socket. I'm sure you guys saw it on the red uh, when we just looked at that, and you guys will definitely see it on the green. Um, none of the wires are color-coded. They're all just uh, black for hot, white for neutral, and then Funny enough, I've never seen this on a signal, there is a ground. So the ground actually attaches to the reflector by this really nice thick screw. So uh, pretty cool. Um, I don't know if uh, actual traffic signal controllers have like circuit breakers that trip. I'm pretty sure they do. Um, light cir lighting circuits uh, in modern day definitely have that. But uh, yeah, I'll learn that, of course, as I'm starting to go into my training here. Um, to get uh, the socket to adjust, because there is adjustment on the socket, as you can see, um, it's pretty much like every other adjustment. Uh, all you got to undo is uh, undo one of these sides, and it's really hard. There's definitely a lot of a lot of tension. Let me try let's see this one. There's just a lot of a lot of tension on this. There we go. So once that's released, uh, you can actually pivot your socket any which way. You can see there's actually an indent where the actual thing was. But let's say I want to have it, I don't know, like this way. So uh, once you uh, got that in that position you want, you can, uh, if I can do it somewhat properly on camera, once you get it in that position, you can uh, click that metal piece into those uh, little grooves that are in the side there. And all you got to do is pull that back. If I can do it, like I said, pull that back through that hole. It is really, really hard. It's always hard with these. And there, you got it in a completely different position. Now, I will say um, I, I have the same... Uh, exact thoughts on adjusting light sockets on these as I do with my street lights. As I'm sure you guys know, I don't care for adjusting the light position on a street light. And really for a traffic light, there's absolutely no point in doing that. Because with how incandescent traffic signal bulbs are designed, is you can see that instead of having uh, more uh, like upward, uh, you know, like horizontal filaments, the filaments are actually vertical and they're formed in this really nice circle so that when you look at the front of the reflector that light is going to equally uh, distribute onto that and then come back out so um, it doesn't really matter which way you spin this because you're always going to have that perfect circle so um, I think that's a waste but uh, a waste of time I think it should just be a fixed socket but yeah, um, I mean, I guess if it does change anything, I, you know, I guess tell me down in the comments. But I don't think it really does much. But other than that, um, it's I guess it's still kind of cool to give you that option. 
And yeah, this is a very, probably one of the nicest uh, aluminum reflectors I've ever seen in a signal. It's just, it's, it has a nice big frame on it. It's very clean and crisp and it has a lot of uh, reflectance. It's just, and actually uh, one thing to m note too, uh, this is actually kind of a thick aluminum. Let me, uh, let me kind of bend it, but I can't bend it much. Uh, for what it is, it's very high quality. So, uh, yeah, uh, kudos to Alzac. Um, I guess kudos to Econolite, too, for actually choosing a good company to make a good reflector. So, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put this back, uh, these, actually, back in the signal. And we can go ahead and look at the internals. Mm. Alright, so for the brains of the signal here, you can see I have this really nice... Um, microelectronic uh, circuit board here that uh, has all sorts of different sequences and I pretty much have been putting these um, in all my signals um, that I've been getting recently. It's made by uh, Galac Electronics. Um, I've been showing uh, Galac Electronics a uh, little microcontroller in pretty much er all my other videos that I've done so far. Um, I got my first ones off of eBay. Um, I think they actually have a website uh, but yeah, I can go ahead and just kind of position this here. If anyone wants to pause the video and just uh, take a look at the website link or email and such. Yeah, there you go. And um, I'm not going to go over this again, but I will say uh, real quick, uh, their controllers are pretty cool. I think they have a couple other types too. Um, you got a nice set of instructions here, and then you got your different modes. Um, this is a newer one, so this one has a few extra modes than uh, some of the older ones. Um, I will put a link down below for the eBay link. Um, I'm, unfortunately, it does update a lot, so um, if it doesn't work, uh, please let me know um, and so I can change it, because um, they're always selling these. But yeah, I do recommend, though, um, since they do have a website, go to their website. I'll also put their website down, too, and below if I can, but yeah. Um, I do like this controller. It's uh, really cool, and it has a lot of options, and I like how they mount. Um, I have the little uh, felt mount mounters in there. But you can see uh, that wires up to the terminal block here. And you can see the terminal block here is pretty much just a basic uh, screw-in plastic terminal block. It's not backlight or anything. It's just modern plastic. Um, what's really nice is the spade terminals here. So um, if you ever, uh, if you ever uh, need to disconnect anything real quick, it's pretty easy. All you got to do is undo those connections and just slide them out. So really nice. Um, the actual wiring that permanently goes uh, into it, though, if it'll focus, what just happened? There we go. You can see it just uh, they tie right in under those screws. Um, and that's my wiring that I did uh, for the control. So yeah, um, not really a lot going on in here. Um, you can see uh, they got some letter letterings here. And you actually can kind of see uh, they got letterings up there too, and they just put that in there just to kind of give the socket terminal some identification and labeling for uh, what wires go where. And you can see right in the middle there. Oh my bad! It says Econolite. Pretty cool. Uh, real quick, you can see this uh, bracketing system here that uh, holds in uh, holds the housings together. Um, I don't know uh, what this is called. Um, I haven't learned just yet. I do have a handbook now. I should look it up. But uh, um, this is just a three-bolt system with a nice uh, set of discs on each side that bolt this down together and keep the housings in place. So pretty nice. And it's obviously the same way down there. Well, that's how your uh, modules are held together and you got some space for your wires. And again, you can see uh, going down to the green, you got... Uh, just a uh, red, black, and, uh, or excuse me, a uh, black, white, and green. So uh, nothing, uh, no fancy color coding going on there. So yeah. All right, so I'll go ahead and close that. Again, yeah, I do close that up. Oops, I'm a little bit over. Oh, I see the problem. Yeah, make sure those aren't uh, hanging inside. Here we go. Now shut it. This. And we'll take a look at the green. 
And of course, it's the same thing. Just undo the tabs like this. And then it opens right up. Same ordeal. You got your lens, your tabs, some of your nice lettering there. And you got that nice Alzac reflector. Again, oops, uh, these are a little heavy. Please don't do that again. And yep, just your wiring. Actually, uh, since we have a nice empty uh, housing in here, you can actually take a, uh, take a closer look at these uh, letterings now. Pretty nice. It's uh, well molded so you can easily see it. You got your amber, uh, well it says, uh, It's odd order to have the well, light, lighting wiring done, but okay. Anyway, yeah, that's uh, pretty much uh, it for the signal. So, uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and close these back up again. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, there's not a lot going on in this signal. It's uh, pretty basic, but uh, now that we've seen the insides, I'll go ahead and stand it back up and we can just watch this do some basic sequences. All right, so I have the signal standing up here and we can just watch it uh, do some basic sequences. The signal doesn't have any uh, unique sequences really. Um, at least this wouldn't have had any unique sequences since it's pretty modern. But yeah, as you can see, uh, the first one is just our uh, red, uh, green, and then uh, yellow. And then all over again. So yeah, let's go ahead and watch. We got green. We got yellow. And then red. Let me go ahead and switch it to a yellow flashing. All right, so there is a red flashing which I uh, said yellow, but uh, in the order of the uh, control setting, it's, it's uh, red first. And now, yellow. And then for a little bit of fun, uh, this is uh, the party mode setting I like to put it on if uh, I'm ever partying with this signal. Um, however, uh, this signal won't be doing a lot of partying. Um, it's probably going to be put up at my dad's house um, on the tree outside with my other street lights. Um, if you guys haven't seen that video yet. So yeah. Anyway, uh, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video. Um, that's really all I have uh, for you guys on this signal. Um, if there's anything I haven't mentioned uh, about this signal that you guys know, uh, please feel free uh, to let me know down in the comments below. I'd like to know a little bit more about the production history of uh, some of the later Econolite stuff. And, uh, yeah. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, please like and subscribe if you want to see more. And um, since it's pretty warm out, uh, I definitely will have some more uh, traffic signal videos uh, probably coming soon. Um, since uh, the weather is really nice and I can go record. Anyway, uh, stay tuned for more, and have a good day, guys. Stay cool. Goodbye.